Hi, dear students. So today uh, we are going to start the new topic on electromagnetic waves. So basically, we'll be discussing about uh, the presence of uh, the or the possibility of electromagnetic wave in vacuum. So the starting point is the Maxwell's equation. So in vacuum, in vacuum is uh, no source region. The Maxwell's equations can be written as del dot E equal zero because it is a vacuum, therefore charge density is zero and the current density is zero. Del dot B equal zero. Del cross E equal minus dot B by dot T. And finally, a del cross B equal mu zero J. Okay, now just take the curl of uh, the third equation. The what you can do is the curl of del cross E. In the right side become minus dot by dot T of del cross B. Okay, so curl of curl can be written as del of del dot E minus del square E equal minus dot by dot T. What is del cross B? Sorry, uh, okay, there is a small mistake here. Del cross B is not mu zero J. Del cross B would be equal to mu zero epsilon zero dou e by dot t. Del cross B equal to mu zero j is Ampere's law. We have to use the modified Ampere's law in Maxwell's equation. And moreover, j is zero. So del cross B is simply mu zero epsilon zero dou e by dot t. So the right hand side become minus dou by dot t of mu zero epsilon zero dou e by dot t. Okay, now del dot E is zero, so therefore the, the first term would be zero. Then we'll get only minus del square E on LHS and RHS would be uh, mu zero epsilon zero can be taken outside because they are just constants, permeability and permittivity. And uh, dot by dot E of dot by dot E gives the second derivative, dot square E by dot E square. Or finally, what we'll get is uh, if you just cancel the negative signs, we'll get del square E equal mu zero epsilon zero dot square E by dot T square. Now, similarly, we can find uh, uh, the curl of del cross B. So if you do that, uh, uh, we'll get uh, this kind of equation del square B equal mu zero epsilon zero dot square b by dot t square. So this I am leaving to you. You can do it yourself. Okay, this uh, derivation starting from del cross b equal to mu zero epsilon zero dot e by dot t. You can show that del square b equal to mu zero epsilon zero dot square b by dot t square. Now this is nothing but the wave equations. So recall in one dimension, For one dimension wave, the wave equation is written as dou square f by dou z square equal one by p square dou square f by dot t square. So this is, this is for one dimension. Now in case of three dimension, what we do, the second derivative has to be changed with uh, uh, the del square. That is the three dimensional generalization of the second derivative with respect to space. Because if you look at del square, it is nothing but dou square by you know x square 
plus do square by do y square plus do square by do z square. So therefore, del square is a three dimension generalization of the partial second derivative with respect to the space. So for three dimensional wave, wave in 3D, the wave equation would be del square f equal one by v square do square f by dot t square. So this would be a three dimensional wave equation. And now uh, we can see that uh, the electromagnetic wave or the, the electric field and the magnetic field satisfies the three dimensional wave equation. So both the electric field and magnetic field satisfy the three dimensional wave equation. Now we can uh, get the expression for the speed of the wave. So we just compare these two expression, the, the, uh, the speed of the wave for both uh, the electric and magnetic. The V equals to one by square root of mu zero epsilon zero. Now we already know the value of mu zero and epsilon zero. We can just substitute it. So mu zero is uh, 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 and epsilon 0 is 8.85 into minus 12. Okay, so if you do this calculation, you will get uh, around 2.9993 three, uh, not, not three, four, into 10 raised to eight meter per second. So that means it is uh, very close to three into 10 raised to eight meter per second. Now, what is this? It's nothing but the speed of light. So what is the implication of this equation then? So this equation says that the light must be an electromagnetic wave. So that is the beauty of the Maxwell's equation. So by just adding an additional term is called a uh, displacement current term in the, uh, the Ampere's law or by just modifying the Ampere's law, we could able to derive the three-dimensional wave equation for the electric field and magnetic field. And we have shown that uh, about these waves as uh, travels with the speed of light. So therefore the light must be an electromagnetic wave. Okay, so just recall where this mu zero and epsilon zero has come. The mu zero has just start, just came in Biot Savart law, and epsilon zero is, came in the uh, the Coulomb's law. They are just uh, the proportionality constants. Finally, when you are coming to uh, the electromagnetic wave, the speed of the light in vacuum depending upon the mu zero epsilon zero. So that is the beauty of physics. Okay, so if you have uh, the the correct theory you can beautifully explain the, the natural phenomena. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so this is uh, about um, uh, the, the, the discussion of electromagnetic waves in vacuum. So by just um, uh, doing a small algebra from the Maxwell's equations in vacuum, we can derive the three-dimensional wave equations. Okay, so in the next class, uh, we'll be discussing about uh, the monochromatic wave and uh, the conditions of uh, the monochromatic wave. So see you there.